Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a brand new year. If you're just joining me now, this is part two of my guest bathroom makeover. Part one, I showed you the entire renovation, the before and after photos. It was such a major undertaking. And for me, at the crux of it all, the floors really made that bathroom sing. I want to get down to the nitty gritty and share all of my tips and tricks if you want to stencil your old dated tile floors. The inspiration was antique and caustic cement tiles. I love that old vintage European vibe. So I was looking for a stencil on Etsy that had that type of aesthetic and vibe. I found this amazing vendor, Dizzy Duck. They're from the UK. It took me almost four months to receive the stencil during quarantine, but I love it. You always want to start with an inspiration image and look to Etsy for really cool stencils. The options are so endless. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of stencils. So you want to stay focused and look for a style that's similar to your inspiration. The best way to achieve the encaustic cement tile look is with multiple colors. I mocked up the color story in Photoshop. I tried it with a dark background, a light background, a colored background. Ultimately, I went with a really light background and accented with black, copper and burgundy. The first step is to use cardboard for practice. You want to roll out your stencil and use painter's tape to tape down the edges. You can use a foam brush, a brush roller, or a sponge to deposit the paint. Use a light hand. A little paint goes such a long way. Once I figured out the color story, I went to my local hardware store and purchased sample paint canisters. It was so inexpensive, it was really $5 a little can and I didn't even use a quarter of it. Print out your inspiration and tape it on the wall nearby so you get all of your colors right. Use painter's tape to tape the edges down because those stencils like to prop up Stenciling is so nuanced. Once you start with one tile, you have to continue that pattern. You really can't start in one corner and then jump to another corner or else your patterns will be off. You'll see that it's not perfect, and because I used a whole lot of paint, you can see globs of that paint showing through, so definitely less is more. Keep wet wipes and dry towels nearby to clean off excess strips. You see how the stencil protrudes up a little bit from the floor? I think it would be a good idea to put double-sided tape on the underside and kind of just flatten everything in place so that, you know, your stippling doesn't get all underneath the pattern.
I'm starting with this tile because the vanity cabinet goes here and you really can't see it just in case I mess up. So you want to make sure that you align all the corners. Use painter's tape to tape the edges down. Once I finished a tile, I found the only way to move on to the next was to use a blow dryer to dry it in between sessions. This helps the paint dry on the floor as well as on the stencil so you can remove it and move on to the next. Of course, you need to repeat until finish. I was working through the night while Kamari was napping. I mean, it really just took me two days to complete the job, but you could probably do it in a day if you went straight.
Don't forget to finish with a top coat to seal it all in. I used a poly acrylic satin sealer so it won't yellow over time. Here's all of my tips and tricks that I learned so you can get it right. Measure your tile. One eighth of an inch off will throw off the entire pattern and design. My tiles weren't quite 12 inches, but I purchased a 12 inch stencil. And while you can't tell unless you're completely up close, the entire pattern deviated from the size of the tile. Always practice on cardboard first. Use a light hand, a little paint goes a long way. Designate a starting point and never skip tiles. Wipe down the back of your stencil so there's no excess paint drips after a few applications. Prepare for those touch-ups. We probably spent the same amount of time touching up as we did actually stenciling the floors. Expect that it's not going to be perfect. When you look at those old antique salvage tiles, you'll see that it's not perfect. Some of the patterns are discolored, the etching might be a little bit off, and that's what I really love about it. To me, all of those little imperfections really make the design come alive. I'll be linking all of the colors I used, all of the materials, and a few of my favorite Etsy vendors so you can find the perfect stencil for your DIY project. Let me know if you've ever stenciled over an old tile floor before or if this is something that you're willing to try. It was such a major transformation. I mean, it completely changed the entire vibe of my bathroom.
Would I do it again? Absolutely. Just remember that there are no shortcuts. I mean, you really have to be very meticulous and very methodical with your application. Remember that it won't be perfect. I'm sure it would have been a lot easier if I just had one background color and one foreground color and I just rolled it all out with a brush or foam roller. Think of creative ways of how you can elevate a really simple design and personalize it to your style and aesthetic. If you like this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up, comment below and let me know if this is a project that you would like to try, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.